should be on. Is this on? Yeah. yeah? Okay. You just need to talk very, very close to the microphone. Uh, who has a question? Yes, sir. Oh, good morning. As I drove in this morning, as I turned on Bloomberg Radio, they were referencing a new law that's going into effect in six months that will mandate a green building initiative, starting with uh, baseline surveys. And they didn't reference in this report whether it was a New York City law, a state law, a federal law. Would you be familiar with the new law that's coming into effect that will mandate well, so much of what you're talking about this morning? I mean, there, there's a lot of discussion, especially on the LEED certification front, about you know municipalities trying to drive that. I know New York City in particular has established a lot of legislation <laughs> that is, you know, pushing for benchmarking and things of that nature. I don't know if I can say specifically, I know that there's a lot of states trying to develop green codes, but um, I don't know of... And I read it this morning, it's a new state law that was really applying to homeowners, is what I, what I heard this morning, um, but I need to read more about it. However, Something I, came down this Yeah, the morning. only other thing I know of is, is uh, from a lighting perspective, they're, they, they're starting to change over their focus of mandates from uh, looking at foot candles to potentially like lumen-based, uh, you know, measuring, which will sort of change how you can, uh, you know, make your space more energy efficient. Thank you. Next question. First, I take, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, first a comment on that first question. City of Baltimore has the most aggressive, um, is this on, by the way? Yeah, you're, you're fine. Yeah, you don't need it. Okay. The uh, City of Baltimore has probably the most aggressive uh, LEED certification rule. They actually, I don't know all the details, they require essentially all new buildings or new uh, major refurbishments to meet a LEED standard. Very controversial because you're having a non-governmental organization, the U.S. Green Business Council, using their standards for something that's law. Now, usually if you don't like a law, you can vote down the lawmakers and change the law, but <coughs> here you have a non-governmental organization. So it's under litigation and it'd be interesting to see how that ends up. If it ends up uh, essentially being considered constitutional, I'm sure other cities are going to take it up. And my question is for the landlord managers. Do you see, out, sort of out in the real world, do you see a, uh, an uptick in demand by tenants or potential tenants in LEED certified buildings compared to equivalent buildings that are not LEED certified? Sure. Uh, what we're seeing, uh, for that, especially for that property down the Bronx, is relatively new uh, for the office tenants, is we're seeing a lot of governmental agencies that are requiring that you're certified or have some level of certification. Um, beyond that, no one, it, it, there's no firm, fast, dead solid law or rule, but I think you're going to see going forward, this is you know our perspective as a company, you're going to see a lot more people that are, especially government agencies, that are going to require at least a minimum lead certification in order to go into the building. Yeah, I think right now tenants are focused on their, you know, with the exception of large corporations who have the wherewithal to establish sustainable teams. Most of the small businesses, they're looking at their core bottom line. Can I thrive? How's my business going to be in about a year from now? So, no. But if you're, if you're a savvy enough landlord and respect sustainability and realize that it has, you're not going to affect every tenant and you do it because it's the right thing to do, I think inevitably, to the point of the government agencies, it's going to have an effect. And be beneficial for you. Also, to follow up, I think that's very short-sighted for people to, even the smaller retailers and smaller tenants, to really not understand that the cost savings are built into the building, and in the end, the charges are going to be less because of the green initiatives we put in, because we've made such a well-insulated glass uh, uh, core shell building that in the end, it's going to cost a lot less to maintain and run, and it's going to be cost a lot less for you to be a tenant in that building. So it sounds like as, as the industry matures, we're both seeing an increase in supply and demand both. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you. Question in the front row. Uh, I'm Manfred Moses. I'm in the energy business for the last 65 years. Energy conservation are probably the benefit to the region. I'm, I'm disappointed, frankly, with this, this whole operation. You're touching just a tiny fraction of what are the potentials or here in Westchester, of all the things that need to be, need to be done. Uh, we have started a small program in Bronxville with the mayor of Bronxville, who's organizing all of the co-op apartments in her, in her village uh, to get together to see what needs to be done in Bronxville to improve the energy efficiency of all of the co-ops. Uh, we're, 
which have the old clunkers for for heating plants or or chilling plants and and haven't touched them and won't touch them unless they push. There needs to be an organization of of landlords and owners in each little community that gets organized and works as a group in order to uh, uh, accomplish this. You, that sounds like a great idea. You people, you people are talking about individual small things, and you're missing the boat on 99% of this. Well, I uh, wish we would organize that. Well, if you can do good things in Bronxville, that's certainly another great step. and. Hopefully, other communities throughout Westchester and beyond can emulate what's being done there. I'm gonna, but I'm going to have to disagree with that point, only because what are we doing today? We're bringing a large group of people together to talk about generating sustainability. And whether we're not landlords, we're tenants, we're a large group of people. So in effect, we're actually affecting a, a more broad scale group of people to, to look at sustainability from every facet. The reality is I can't help a co-op. I don't work for a co-op. But I can help a landlord. And, you know, one of the people sitting in this audience who are in a tenant space, they can help their space. And those landlords who are co-ops, they can help their co-ops. So if everybody's working together, we are affecting that 99% of the boat. The, the boat. But if you, if you consume yourself with, the, with everything and think, I'm going to take on everything, frankly, what I've seen, you're not going to go anywhere. So I think everyone has to take on their own part to, to overhaul the system. Good. A question for the tenants. Would you pay more rent? go into a LEED certified building? Well, I'm going to uh, basically reiterate what was just said. If, if there's a good case that down the line your operating expenses may be lower because of that, and it more than likely will be, it may not be more rent at the end of the day. Well, I'm thinking more office. just base rent. Not, I understand the concept of the operating expense reductions because you'll pay that through your escalations or if you're a net lease building you'll pay that directly mm -hmm. but I'm really asking the question if you have a choice in your occupancy decision would you pay more for a like fully certified lead building versus <coughs> a building that's not lead certified you know I think it depends on what the definition of more is and, and a what dollar a square foot more maybe um, you know, the P, don't underestimate the PR aspect of any green efforts out there. Um, it, we use it all the time. When I bring people to tour Regeneron on a regular basis, we talk about the sustainability efforts we've undertaken along with the landlord. And, and people eat that stuff up. And they really think Biomed and Regeneron are great companies. And, and it ends up in the news. And that type of stuff, those intangibles, can be really important, and depending on the company, they may or may not find value in that, or may or may not be able to actually afford that extra dollar or whatever it is a square foot. But if you can, it may be extremely valuable. Because don't forget, we're, we're here in the community, and um, you know we have to be good citizens. And if, if we can be, then we should be, because let's face facts, some of us slip up every once in a while. And if they find that you put the wet waste in the wrong thing, do you want that to be the headline that everybody remembers it, because Alex has written about it? Or do you want people to remember all those good stories about all the green initiatives that you've undertaken and been successful with? Hopefully they will have heard the good stuff and will remember the good stuff and say oh, that was a minor slip up as opposed to that now becomes the major problem with that company or landlord. Um, so if you have a LEED certified building and you're doing a lot of these great things, it can help.